Okay, so this is a question that I made up. I'm going to go over the solution. It's a little bit more complicated than I wanted to, but let's just work through it and be calm. Okay, so here is the question. I have a two charges. Uh, Q1 is Q1 is one nanocoulomb, and it's at the origin. And Q2 is five nanocoulombs, and it's over here, 0.3 meters away on the x-axis. Everyone's happy with that because there's nothing, there's nothing complicated yet, right? That's fine. Okay, so now the question is, where is the electric field zero, the magnitude electric field zero? So where is, uh, the, well, you know, technically it'd be the total electric field zero, um, which is the vector zero, 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 is technically a vector, but uh, we, we're just gonna constrain this to the x-axis. So when, when we, where is the x component of the electric field zero? Okay, so let's just think about the electric field due to these two charges for a second. So here's a positive charge it's going to make an electric field that radiates out that way. This one's going to make an electric field like this. And so in order for the total electric field to be zero, I'd have E, and this is just in the X direction. I'm just dealing with it. It's going to be E1 plus E2. I'm writing these as scalars because I'm only in the X direction. Okay. So the question is, where can that be true? In order for E1 plus E2 to be zero, they have to be in different directions. Okay. So right here, over in this region, they're both pointing that way, right? Because they're both pointing away from the charges. Over here, they're both pointing that way. So the only area that they can both, they can be in opposite direction is somewhere in here. So somewhere in here, I'll have uh, E1 and I'll have E2. And this is some distance. I don't know what that distance is, but it's X. So we want to find that value of X. Uh, okay, so I can find the electric field due to this one because it's I get an expression. I know the distance away from the charge is x. How far away is it from that charge? Well, if I know the distance between the two charges is 0.3 meters, this would be 0.3 minus x. So this is going to be 0.3 minus x is that distance. Okay, so now we can go ahead and solve for the total electric field. So I know that the electric field, the magnitude, this is just the magnitude, the magnitude of the electric field due to one charge is KQ over R squared, where K is nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. So K is a constant, Q is the charge, and R is the distance from that charge, and that gives me the magnitude. I've already determined the direction, kind of built that into this whole problem because I know I know where I'm, I'm in the, only on the x direction. Okay, so <clears throat> E1 is going to be let's call that a positive electric field because it's in the positive x direction. It's going to be k q1 over x squared. E2 is going to be negative k q2 over 0.3 minus x squared. So I want to add those two together and have them equal to zero. And if that was true, then these would have to be opposite of each other. So I can just set them equal to each other. So I have k q1 over x squared equals k. Now it's, it's positive. k because it's on, I moved to the other side. q2 over 0.3 minus x quantity squared. And I want to solve that for x. I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to erase this and, and write it out a little bit better. Okay, so uh, right here I want to solve for x. I can uh, multiply both sides by x squared, multiply both sides by 0.3 minus x squared, and that it's the same as cross multiplying. So I get 0.3 minus x squared times k times q1 equals x squared times k times q2. The k's cancel. Uh, and I'm going to divide both sides by q1. 
and then I'm gonna multiply this out because I, I need that, okay? So I'm gonna say, because I can't solve for x if it's in there. So I get 0.3 squared minus 0.6x. Remember, it's this times this plus this times this. So I get uh, minus 2 times 0.3x. So that went to 0.6. And then I get plus x squared equals x squared and then q2 over q1. Now, q2 is 5, q1 is 1, so this is just the number 5. So I have 0.3 squared minus 0.6x plus x squared equals 5x squared. Now we have a problem. Here is a case where I have a constant, I have an x term and I have an x squared term. So that suggests either get lucky and factor, it's not going to happen, or use a quadratic equation. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to subtract, um, yeah, I'll, I'll subtract 5x squared from both sides and gather all my terms. So I have negative 4x squared, because I had four, I had 1x squared minus 5x squared. And then I have minus 0.6x plus 0.3 squared equals 0. So this is like a x squared plus b x plus c equals 0. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's a quadratic equation. So I just need to put my values in here for b, a, and c. So uh, b is going to be negative 0.6, c is 0.3 squared, and a is negative 4. And if you do that, you actually get two answers. I wrote it down already. One of them's negative, so that one doesn't really help. Another one is 0 0.9, 0, 0 0.0927 meters. So that would be, well, I've raised it. But that is in between those two points, right? If I got something that was outside that, that'd be kind of weird. Um, and also notice that this is closer to the one nanocoulomb charge because the five nanocoulomb charge is gonna make a larger electric field anyway. So you have to be closer to the one nanocoulomb in order to get them to cancel. Okay, so this was only complicated because you had to use a quadratic equation. Other than that, it was, it was pretty straightforward in terms of adding electric fields. So I guess I'm okay with that. Uh, so I'm going to make another video to show all the, the ranges of electric fields in between those two charges and on the other side. But I'm going to do that in Python, so that'll be another video.